Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Jashed. Today I'm very excited to have with me Jessica Hutto, the Divine Maven. So Jessica helps people tap into their intuitive gifts and co-create their dream life and business using the power of the chakras and is just a badass powerhouse to follow and to be in the realm of. So I'm really excited to have you here joining me. Thanks so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Can I have you introduce me <laughs> everywhere I go? That was so beautiful. I'm so added to, to, to my list of services. <laughs> yeah. um, so today, because of how you share and what you share around intuition and intuitive gifts, and we've spoken a little bit about this before as well, um, that when people hear intuition or like spiritual business, there's this immediate like contraction or like closing up of this um I don't know if you've watched the good place it reminds me of like when he goes into the cocoon and (laughs) he's like nope too much so uh, (laughs) there's so many questions just ran through my mind with starting your business because you're a former nurse also you're a nurse for over a decade (laughs) yeah (laughs) too long which is which is quite like a stark contrast to to what you do now what's the biggest actually what's the biggest pushback that you get from people as far as like when they hear the word intuition or spiritual Mm. gifts or spiritual business or any of those words that that feel natural and normal to you yeah that's such a good question and I think they they didn't feel natural and normal to me saying them but instead I felt them Right. It's kind of like, oh, there's this familiarity. There's this almost like coming home of like, oh, that feels really familiar. That feels something in within me was like activated talking about it. But in the beginning, I feel like people think it's very woo woo, right? They think Mm. this girl's like lost her marbles, you know, she's (laughs) supposed to be the science based nurse. And, you know, here she is talking about energy and intuition. So, yeah, that made it almost another layer of fear to step into that business. And I don't know if you felt that as well. Just, I know that you teach a lot about communication, but I know you have a lot of that energy aspect to it and the spiritual. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm sure you can relate where it just people not knowing there can just be so much tied behind a certain word that we don't know. It's just whatever their experience is with it. And so it's kind of, there comes a point where you just have to not care, I think, mm. what people might think behind it because it could be amazing. It could be not so amazing. And you just hope that when they learn through you that they'll be able to just take something. They'll be able to learn something about it, maybe gain a different perspective about what you do or what you're teaching. And that's all that I can cope for, so. Yeah, and that's that's true because it is like, it just becomes a the opportunity to like give them a different relationship with what that word means because I have that come up with people for communication because people are like yeah, oh, we're I talking. can't communicate yeah <laughs> like I can't communicate I'm like well you're human and you know you can but I also have it like when I teach yoga because I teach yoga in like a beautiful studio where I can talk about all like the energy and everything and then I also teach yoga and like the army base or like with corporate (laughs) so I'm like constantly sort of shifting my language but also allowing it to be a space where we introduce little bits of that language to give them a different context of what that means also Mm. um so you said that you weren't comfortable with those words initially especially coming like from that like you said like it's very science-based background in yeah nursing right so what what was your journey with that what what brought you into like that realm of those words and that idea and (laughs) crossing over to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's interesting. And I don't know if you resonate or other readers, but I was always pretty spiritual as a child. I would look up astrology and I would see are my friends matched up with me. (laughs) very into that, gems. It's, it's a stuff. rule. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rule. It's like, it's your yeah. initiation. <laughs> yeah. And I was probably 14 and I was reading all these self-help books. I don't really know how, you know, other people were worried about what they're wearing to school. And I was looking up codependency. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I definitely had that these, age. Yeah. yeah, I had this, you know, interest in it. And then I kind of pushed it away as I went to college and try to quote unquote, I don't know if they have an Australian dream, but there's an American dream that people kind of <laughs> idolize, yeah. which is go to the best school, get the best degree, get the best job um, that has the benefits and mm. basically never stopping to ask if that is really something that feels true for us. And never, I never thought it was an option that you could do something that you really, really love, like be an artist or own a store or something like that. That just seems so reckless. And mm. so I really just pushed down that idea and that spiritual side of me and all the things that I was really, really interested in and really just went down this path of, okay, like I got the job now and I'm going to get the house. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have the kids. And that's going to equal happiness because that's what everybody tells me. And I think it was, I had my daughter, she's going to be eight. So eight years ago, when I had my daughter, I had really, really bad postpartum depression. And I would say that was the moment that everything came crashing down where I think that the universe or source or whatever you call it mm. and your intuition, if we're not following it, it's going to start throwing little pebbles at you until, you know, if you don't listen, then it's like, all right, we're going to throw a rock now. And then I, I call it the Mack truck, like the Mack like truck, the, yeah. hay, the hay, the hay, and then the hay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like full on Mack truck that hit me and, you know, our, our rock bottom moment, right. Or our, our dark night of the soul. And so for me, that was this debilitating postpartum depression. And it really forced me to take a look at my life of like, why, why was I unhappy? I had all of these things and also realizing I didn't know really who I was and what I liked to do. And so I think as for me, when I had a child, you start thinking about all that kind of stuff of like, well, who am I? Am I what am I going to teach them? And I had no idea. So interestingly enough, one of my girlfriends, at the time was trying to cheer me up. And so she said, let's go to, I want to take you to this woman's circle. And it was this lady, this medium named Paula. I remember her so clearly. And it was a circle of like eight women and they were pulling Oracle cards and doing all this, you know, stuff. And instead of being, I was a little nervous, but it actually felt like, wow, this is really amazing. This feels so like a remembering. And I remember she pulled a card for me and it just resonated so much. And so for me, it just became this like little bright light, little tiny light in the midst of a lot of darkness. And so I just kind of followed that because I thought, wow, well, I'm enjoying this right now in this time where I really can't find much enjoyment and much. And so from there, I, it was kind of what you say of like, when you go to yoga and you teach at maybe the army base, you give them a little dose of It was little doses of that. And I think it took multiple times of being exposed to it to really get into it even more Mm. and open up. It wasn't just like one day I had this huge awakening and started (laughs) meditating every single day and getting downloads. This was, you know, this is obviously has been an eight year, really long journey. Mm. And, but that was really the catalyst I would say was that, that darker moment. And then that almost like when you're ready, the, the teacher will appear, right? When the student's ready, the yeah. teacher will appear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, it's funny. Cause like when, when you hear about talking, like people talking about awakenings and like, oh, I had my awakening and <laughs> in, I don't know, 2014 or like whatever, you know, whenever it was, it's like, yeah, but like that's not in my experience, but also like from speaking to people, it's never, it's never that moment, like, or I shouldn't say never because it could be for some people, but like from what I've seen, it's it's not that moment of you wake up, you're like, no, oh, I'm different. Like, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't, it is this doses is a really good way to put it. It's like these little doses and you kind of just, you follow your feet. Like mm. you're just following like the yellow brick road and you're like, oh, what's yeah. around this bend? And oh, okay, this is interesting. Does this resonate? Does this not? Like, it's just this whole um, it is a journey. I love it that. Is, I'm saying it that it's like a yellow brick road. It's almost like walking, right? You know, you're yeah. crawling and then you're slowly getting on your feet. And then like you said, looking mm. around the corner. And so, yeah, it's not it, in most things that I, you know, from, I've heard from clients and stuff, it's not so much of an overnight. It's no, not we usually. Love it. Like, we love it to be overnight <laughs> though. We just want to, <laughs> yeah. 
yes. oh my god there's still things I'm like just happen overnight can we just yeah <laughs> like, you just get on there. <laughs> yeah it's um I have a question for you because well obviously I have questions for you but like there's a specific question I want to ask because I had this new level of a realization in a group that I was facilitating a few weeks ago do you feel like generally speaking people are craving that connection especially if they are in you know very science or um like cognitive based roles as well Mm -hmm. like that people are kind of like as soon as you step into that position like in your work now so if we fast forward to now like as soon as you step into that position and and show up without worrying about the language almost you're just like well this like you know that people it kind of gives them that I get that image now of like the opening of the cocoon, the the peeking out that, oh yeah, I've been craving this, but I've never spoken about this before, but you are. So here I am. Like it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Up. Almost the mm-hmm. permission slip of, yeah. wow, you went first and I resonate with this. And I've seen mm-hmm. that because it's so interesting. I was so scared to share some of these topics with even my mother-in-law, she had no idea I was into crystals and things like that because I know she kind of had a negative connotation and she's, you know, I've known you for 17 years and I never knew that. And, but in, since I really opened up with that people that I used to be so nervous that I used to work with in nursing and healthcare, they've actually became my clients. And so, Mm. you know, they really were craving it or maybe not even knowing they were craving it, but maybe just struggling and needing some help tuning into their own intuition and figuring out what is it that they really desire. Mm -hmm. And almost this waking up of, oh yeah, that's me too. I have all these things and I feel kind of empty. What else is there? Let's have that conversation. So I absolutely think that that has helped for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's, like it's scary sometimes because I come from a corporate background as well and I remember when I went into business for myself I was like I had to I had a reckoning with myself like I just took myself through a reckoning where I was like you're kind of holding back sharing because you know that some of your old colleagues follow you Mm -hmm. and you're worried about them seeing you try in case it doesn't work out like what if they see you try and then it doesn't work out and I had to have that reckoning with myself of you know, I need to, I need to show up for it to work out. So Mm. it's not going to work out if I keep staying in this space. So it can be like, I know that that, that transition also, like whether they, like whether it lights up something in them or not, right. It can, it can be something like, even as a business owner that you kind of have to work through internally too and go, oh, what they think or say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not. It's so true. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a. But real... even though it's so scary for you, once you do it, does it? I mean, I know for me, it felt so freeing. It was so terrifying, mm. and I thought it would just be uh, this horrible wound or something that I was <laughs> opening up, and I felt more embodied and free, and just yeah, knowing I... who I really was. Yeah, I I walk the fine line between. Well, I used to um, walk the fine line between like people pleaser and and then also stubbornness and be like, yeah, but I'm not going to let anyone tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> yeah. Same. So yeah, I found that like that helped to just to lean into that and be like, well, this is what mm. I want to do. So like, yeah. no one was actually fighting me on anything. Um, when so you found that you were still nursing when you had your daughter well you're on like leave Mm -hmm. but like you were still you were still a nurse when you had your daughter yeah yeah and I still I kind of just did this spiritual personal growth or journey for another four years I think I mean I realized I didn't want to do nursing full-time so after Mm -hmm. that I made this scary decision to leave full-time so I left the benefits I left the security, right. Of Mm. I'm going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I went to in nursing, they have an on-call position or per DM, which is just kind of, you work when they need you. And so again, it's, I like how you said baby steps. It wasn't like, I just quit what I was doing and started my business. I left full-time still was doing nursing, but I was doing it more on, well, what, what was important to me? Freedom was really important. So I did this where I worked the days that I wanted to. Right. So I, 
maybe worked two days a week and then gave myself that mental health break that I really Mm -hmm. needed. And I found out, wow, I could make it work. You know, it's always scary of, am I going to get enough money and am I going to make it? And it started with that first leap of taking that leap and figuring out, oh, I I didn't die. I didn't (laughs) go homeless. I survived. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, and it, you know, I had kids and I had a mortgage. So that fear was really real of when you're in, and, and I'm sure, you know, you've been in the corporate and you've been in those, those situations where, and everyone around you is like, why are you leaving this? This is your benefits and your yeah. retirement, all those that's real. You know, it's this, it can feel really scary. So for me, that first step was just leaving the permanent days. And I went to on-call and that gave me more time to just look at what else that I might've wanted to do. So I actually became, I liked styling and clothes. So I became a personal awesome. stylist. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So that was another thing too, is when we're looking for something else, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Sometimes it's about uncovering it and it's not almost throwing spaghetti at a wall. You have to try and see if you like it first. So I tried the styling, personal styling. I like making people feel confident. I love that part of it. I didn't mm-hmm. love the corporate the corporate part of that space too. So I didn't take it as a loss. I took it as, wow, these are the things I liked about it. What's something else that I can do that is similar. And so it was a lot of trying those different things until I hired a coach actually maybe three and a half years ago, a life coach, a spiritual life coach. And I was like, damn, I want to do what you're doing. (laughs) How is this possible? She was like 25 and doing it. And I think just meeting somebody that's living and breathing and and was doing it and seeing the transformation that I get, I was like, I, I don't know if I could do it, but I darn near need to try. And, but something just kind of lit up in me when I Mm. thought about it or, and went through that process with her. And I think uh, I like I don't hate myself, but like part of me is like rolling my eyes at me even saying this, but it's like <laughs> it's trusting the process as well. And oh, yeah. like there's a lesson here for past Jess, I'm sure. But like there's <laughs> it's trusting the process and and also when you take those little leaps where you're like, okay, cool. Like it's it's following on your intuition, but it's also creating space for your intuition to show up. Mm. and it's it's not putting the pressure on yourself to know like to land right into exactly what is right yes like, and to land like you know you went through the styling first and that's like sometimes it happens you know where people are like yep this is it this is great amazing you know but for my journey also it was the yep this is a piece of it keep going <laughs> keep going <laughs> like because then you kind of get bored there and you're like well there's something you know, like, and you got, you got to keep going. You've got to, but I think, do you find that people um, sometimes hold themselves back from like taking the leaps because they don't have all the answers and they're like, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know exactly what I want yet. So like, you know, there's this whole pressure on finding a purpose and that's a Absolutely. lot of pressure to put our, on ourselves. So much pressure. And then when we look, say I hadn't been on a podcast and maybe you just saw that I was running the spiritual business, you would have no idea mm. that I had this interim time of yeah. you know, personal styling and, and applying to so many different things just to try to figure it out, you know, going to different mm. classes, going to yoga classes and sound bowl healings and just try, really experimenting different routes of things of, wow, what do I even like to do? And then from figuring out the things I like to do go from there. And so I do, I think that there's the whole, mm, there's a chapter one that we're in and then we see Mm -hmm. so much chapter 10 and then there's those whole other chapters that we don't realize, or we don't remember to tell ourselves, Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And I like what you said there as well that I want to pick up on is it's, it's the, what do I like to do? Because sometimes like there's the pressure on I need to figure out like what my whole business and life purpose and what do I do for work? It starts with going, actually just start with doing what you like to do. And then you'll be more in that state anyway. Right. Like even if it's not that for work related things, like it's, you're still enjoying, you're still enjoying life, but you're still doing things that you like to do and experiencing that. And that helps. That's one shift. Like you said, that's yeah. 
step in the right direction of what one thing, even if it's a hobby or a part-time gig, something where you're finding a little bit of that enjoyment in the here and now, I believe will open you up to more of that. Yeah. So when did you first start to realize that you were tapping into more of your intuition rather than just like following blindly where you're like, oh, actually, I think I'm doing this and this is, oh, this is what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I knew for a long, I I knew what not being in my intuition felt like after the fact, right? (laughs) After that, after that uh, Mack truck event, I looked back Mm. and I thought of all the times, wow, physical illness was a big one for me where I knew I was. So I feel like alignment is when we're following our intuition and we're kind of on that path where things just seem to sort of flow. So for me, when I'm not really following my intuition or I'm out of alignment is when I feel more resistance. I tend for me again, it was more physical. I have a lot of stomach issues and things like that and not sleeping, not feeling fulfilled on a day-to-day basis. So it was more of these little, little things that weren't, huge of, oh, this is totally the wrong path. It was these little Mm. nudges, these little, mm, I guess, yeah, nudges is just, I would say little ways of like the universe showing me this doesn't feel good. Like, and this doesn't feel good too. And, (laughs) you know, and then when I looked back on it, it's almost like hindsight's 2020. And when I look back, all the signs were kind of there. And I think that's actually really helpful if we're like, well, I'm not intuitive or something. I try to think of, well, when did something feel off to you and kind of go back from there? So I had an experience where I, if you ever found out like a boyfriend is cheating or something, right? Like the woman intuition where (laughs) you just know, (laughs) you know? And so I remembered, I'm like, wow, no, I did know that time. That was one time that I felt intuitive and again, it was looking back. So I try to look, look backwards to give me some insight of like, wow, what did it feel Mm. like when I was really not on my right path? And what did it feel like when I was on there? And that helped me along with meditating. What else did I do? Oracle cards were huge. Like I pulled this damn Oracle card deck. I pulled spiritual career like five times and oh, wow. I was like, did you oh, like reshuffle what? it? You're like, I'm not ready. No, what's the other one? Yeah, no, I, was like, <laughs> Give me a one. Like, I don't know how. I'm like, do you mean you want me to be a nun? Like, I don't understand what this means. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was another way that helped me speak to my intuition. I just almost like it was a a little way to communicate between what my intuition was telling me and then actually pulling a card to kind of give me the message when I really wasn't putting the two and two together. And then over time, I kind of melded the two where I would pull the card and kind of feel like, okay, intuitively, I know what this is telling me. Maybe I'd read the the book, the guidebook that tells you about that card. And I was like, oh yeah, that I already felt that too. Yeah. And that helped a lot, but mm. I pretty much knew in the beginning when I wasn't and in, in, in following yeah. my intuition from there. And then that kind of led me to feeling what was, and I feel the same thing with finding my purpose, right. Or uncovering my purpose. I feel like it's always there. Mm but it was like, what's not working led me to what was working. Yeah. What do you think stops people from following through on that? Is it like sometimes because it can be challenging to look at the, the moments where like, and to acknowledge the moments where we, you know, may have let something (laughs) slide and, and go like, Oh, like I really, you know, let myself down there or like I knew and I still, you know, did the opposite and do you find that that comes up for people a lot? Yeah. I mean, looking back sometimes can be painful depending on the lens that we look at it through. So if we're looking at it through that, but if we look at, wow, what was that lesson there and how did it maybe course correct me or eventually course correct me to the right path? So I do feel, and then, but then at the same token, you can think of all the times of like, wow, what about that one time that I did listen to it? And so even when I have someone look back at maybe the negative and they're beating themselves up, I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's try to look for the silver lining here. What was a time when maybe you did feel in your, in your power and listening to your intuition? And what did that feel like for you to yeah. kind of reframe and get them out of it? Yeah. And I like that reframe that you use as well, because it does 
it does make a difference and it does help people that <clears throat> easy it does help people that like recognize that it doesn't have to be this big huge thing it's like you know sometimes you're not gonna know that the boyfriend's cheating on you like mm-hmm. you know sometimes that will actually be a blindsiding moment because True. for like reason x y and z right but it can be those little moments of like oh you know that's why I turned down this street and went this way home because I found out traffic like it doesn't have to even be a crash but like traffic was bad and that would have taken ages or um oh that's why I picked up the phone and messaged that friend because then when they turned like they messaged back and said like this happened to me this week like I messaged a friend and he turned around he's like I swear you can hear when I'm talking about you (laughs) it's like I didn't know like you know it's those little moments that can help build up our our confidence intuitive muscle or if you will Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't always have to be the why don't I know my life purpose and (laughs) why don't I have like and I why is lightning not striking and (laughs) the answer yeah I'm saying this in jest because like (laughs) <laughs> this is what, this is may or may not be what we're going through currently and yeah, it's it's always like it's, it's a deeper learning each time right but like it is it's <laughs> it is this moment like it is it is these allowing ourselves to acknowledge and I know that you share like you're the TikTok queen also <laughs> I feel like it needs to be acknowledged you are the TikTok queen I love TikTok <laughs> and, and but you share like on like I see it as reels like because I don't have TikTok but like you share how just the little things like how you can practice um with you know like writing down numbers on different pieces of paper and mixing them up and picking one and then guessing or guessing quote unquote guessing yeah what number it is that kind of thing right yeah that's my favorite really in because everybody is intuitive everyone mm-hmm. has this whether you call it that or not maybe your inner true north or your guidance system we all have it we just haven't really been taught or it hasn't been celebrated or yeah. honored right you know, <laughs> growing up you know we've just been kind of really told to go on this path or a lot of us have right by well-meaning parents that want us to just be quote unquote secure and yeah and safe and live a good life and yeah what what that means what they think that that means is a good life and safe, right? Mm-hmm. Which is all an illusion. Like we're not safe at all, which I learned <laughs> when I was working nursing in the pandemic and I didn't have a oh, job. Yeah. So, so interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do love, yeah, learning <laughs> the really simple, just cutting out pieces of paper. So cutting out 10 pieces of paper, like a little square, putting a no on all those 10 and then another 10 pieces of paper and putting yes, shuffling mm-hmm. them up closing your eyes and just feeling into what do you feel like it is? Do you feel like it's a yes? Do you feel like it's a no? And really, do you feel it? Do you see it in your mind's eye? Some people see it. Some people maybe hear like their little voice saying no, yes. Or maybe they Mm -hmm. feel it in their body and then flipping over the card and seeing, oh, what, you know, what came up? Was that correct? And it's not about getting it right or wrong. Cause it, trust me, I mean, I think I got like a 20% the first time and I'm like, oh my God, but it's just about feeling in when I was right. What did that feel like in my body? And when that was mm. off, what did that feel like? Because your intuition will speak to you in ways that are more subtle than lightning striking from the sky. And so it's just getting to know more of those, those subtle ways that it speaks to you is, is key. Yeah. And I love that too, because like, it can be a habit to be like, but I have to get it right. Like, you know, I have to, and if I'm not getting it right, then I'm doing it wrong and I'm bad, but it's actually, it's not about that at all. It is, it is about relearning and reacquainting yourself with the language that like your body or like your, your body, your whole experience, like, you know, as a body speaks, you know, it's like what happens. Yeah. I love that. Relearning something it already knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it does know, and, and like inherently, it does know. As children, as babies, we know. Like, there's a knowing, and even as like little kids, there's a knowing. And then sometimes, like you said, like you were reading self help books at fourteen, and <laughs> like I love that. Such a mom. I can yeah, do it. But, I can do it. 
<laughs> I could do it. You could but, too. <laughs> yeah. If, God, if I learned about codependency at 14, it would have saved me a lot. Like, of, you know, like, so it is, it is this, it's trusting the little nudges, isn't it? It's like going, even if we don't understand why, and like, it's always the biggest question of like, yeah, but why? Like, but why is this? And it's not just a question kids ask, like adults ask that too. Yeah. And it's then going, well, kind of just trust it and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's scary. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Relinquishing yeah. that control. I feel like this <laughs> is the lesson of this podcast. Grace for yourself. Surrender yeah. control. And yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it is. It's hard to sometimes we want to know the how and the why, but I think that's part of our growth journey is mm-hmm. what the beauty looks like when we do surrender and we do kind of take that leap without knowing is when kind of the most beautiful manifestations and things can come about. But saying that and doing that are two different things I fully realize, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's worth you- it. <laughs> It's and it is worth it. Do you find that you actually learn more of the how the more that you do surrender into like in the context of everything that we've spoken about? Yeah, I feel that it 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 does. It will it almost shows up not quicker, but maybe with a little less resistance when I yeah yeah, yeah when it's, I surrender it's, yeah it's less arduous. Like, you know, yeah. like you still learn the how, but you just, you're not suffering as much in the meantime. You're not yeah. like, oh, this is the worst. So true. And I do think yeah. it gets a little bit easier because like you said, if you've done it before, you can, your mind can take you back to that time where, oh yes, mm. this is when I did surrender this and look how wonderful it turned out better than I could have imagined. And not always, but most of the time it helps you to make that <laughs> yeah. leap again. But even for me, I mean, I still will forget because I sell courses and do launches and things like that. And, you know, even if I sold out one time, I, I'll still be in my head of, oh, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to do it. This It's not going to happen this time. Or how is it going to happen? Yeah. And, you know, it's just, man, didn't I already learn this lesson? But <laughs> here it is it's again. Just- it's a spiral. It's the deeper layer, right? <laughs> yes. That's, that's a really beautiful thing. It's like a spiral. Maybe you come around to the knowing quicker, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah. And launches are a funny one as like for trust as well, because like a lot of launches will like sales will happen in the last few days of it. So you're kind of sitting there in the limbo and, and it doesn't have to be a launch. You don't have to be a business owner to relate to that. Like there's a limbo in every area of life. Yeah. There's a limbo in this pandemic. Hi. Like (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot like, you know, so it's like this, okay, we're in the limbo right now. And this might be it. like whatever limbo you're in might be a bigger limbo than you've experienced before. It might feel bigger or it might feel like there's more riding on it. But at the same time, you know how, you know how sometimes you're speaking, you're like, yes, I need to hear this also. And at the same time, <laughs> and at I the know. Same, and at the same time, though, it's like we've been in limbos before. Yeah. We've been in highs like, before, we've been in lows before, we've been in limbos yeah. before. And we're going and to again. exhale. Yeah. It's like, mm. you know, and it's allowed to suck. If it sucks, it's allowed to feel whatever it feels like. And that's part of your intuition also. It's like going, yep. Yeah. This is a human experience. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you signed up for this. Yay. Mm, yeah, pretty much. But oh yeah, that, I do find that to be true. What you said about limbo and not just in launching and everything, even mm. when someone's looking for a job, maybe they want to yeah. have a new job. It's exciting at first you're applying and then there's usually this lull and what's happening and it feels like nothing's happening. doesn't look like anything's happening. And then the moment that we really just, okay, I'm like throwing my hands up in this, whatever's going to happen is happening. And then boom, you know, you get the yeah. call, the interview yeah. or something like that. Yeah. That's it. I actually used an analogy um, in a corporate yoga session yesterday where like it was a lunchtime session. So it's harder for them to like step away from the work to come in and pause for 30 minutes. Mm. And I said, like, I'm like part of this showing up for yourself is practicing trust in what you've done so far. So like, you know, take it literally or like off <laughs> out of the office and into yeah. wherever, but like what you've done so far in the day 
but that momentum isn't going to be lost mm. just because you're taking 30 minutes out. In fact, it's probably going to run smoother because it's like you're, you know, resetting your energy, you're resetting. Yeah. yeah. And then you can come back and it's a lot easier. So it is, there's so many lessons and all of that. And I like also, yeah, I like what you said about the Oracle cards to entrusting, like, cause that's how I built mine is like, you know, and I went through phases where I was like, no, not that one. Like, <laughs> but then I realized I just needed to stop using that deck because it was like activating. Cause I, I, I attributed a story to, a, you know, like a particular card. Mm-hmm. So then it was like, I don't have a healthy relationship with this deck. <laughs> I'm breaking up with this card deck. <laughs> I'm breaking up or I'm going to come back when I'm in a healthier place. Like, you know? <laughs> But like, cause the wording was like, oh no, that's, you know, activating for me, but it is, it's like, it's the, cause I know you have a, you have a card deck, you have an Oracle deck also, and it's beautiful. And yeah. I always feel like I don't, I don't have it in my hands, but like I, you have it as an Instagram filter, which is amazing. <laughs> I need to mail and you I the have, deck. Yeah. And I have people in my sphere who use it and like have drawn cards for me and each time it lands, it's the but it's the knowing anyway and it's the practice Mm. of the right and trusting what the message is also without telling yourself the story and just going yeah like the immediate thing that comes up like when I get the throat chakra deck is like expression it's like oh actually yeah I am going through an expression period right now where I'm Mm -hmm. expressing myself in in more ways or you know like whatever it is and it's kind of just trusting that that to be the message like you know and and then let the story unfold anyway. Mm, yeah. Mm. Trusting the message that comes up for you. And that, and then, yeah, like you said, that's it. Then yeah. letting it go and letting it unfold. No more, not needing to know more, but trust. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't need, it doesn't need to tell us the whole story all the time. Like that's mm-hmm. part of the actual experience also, which is a really, I feel like, do you think that's a key part of like intuition as well? It's just. Yeah yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> all the all the not you know they're not always like the sunniest parts of it but I do and then yeah. it is really worth it when we do mm. implement those kind of yeah. ways of being and it feels certain. satisfying also like let's let's be real it feels satisfying on the other end because then like when we do trust it and we're like oh we get the moment where we get to say like oh I was right like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you need that moment you get it like you, you know, get it just, yeah then you can go oh. back to it again the next time and mm-hmm. anchor anchor in that okay that yeah. moment of being on the right path and following it yeah definitely yeah. oh my god there's so much you're right like there's so many lessons around grace and surrender and and just learning relearning and trust what, the like, process right yeah I feel, I'm, I'm trying to think of like oh there's like things that <laughs> I feel like, uh, but both of us, as we're talking, we kind of like, oh, like it's hitting me. Like, oh yeah, yeah that, that one's for me. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been great. Tell people about, about your Oracle decks, please, because it is beautiful oh, yeah. and about where they can follow you and, and all of the things. The all the maiden. things. <laughs> yes. I created a chakra goddess Oracle card deck and it's a deck to help you again, get in touch with your intuition and then also learn about the chakra system in just kind of a fun way. That's not so, mm, sometimes I feel some of the topics can be so vast and expansive and for me, honestly, harder to understand. So I wanted to create it in a way that just anybody could understand about the chakra system and how to bring balance to it and ultimately how to bring more confidence, bliss, peace, joy, all those like good things into your life and in from you, like you be the own self healer mm-hmm. through the message that messages that you receive in the cards. So I do have those. I think there's about 10 left actually of the first batch that I ordered. So not a lot, but you can get them on my Instagram and my TikTok are probably, that's where I, let's be real. That's where I so hang much. out. <laughs> and it's um, at the divine maven is my handle. 
And from there, there's tons of links. Like we talked about intuition. I have a freebie on six ways to reignite your intuition. There is a freebie on Oracle cards. If you're like, what the heck are Oracle cards? It's a great way to get started. And then I also have a freebie on the chakras as well. If you're like, oh, I don't know what the chakras are, but they just sound kind of interesting. It's a really fun download to, you can print it out, copy a little workbook to just go through some of the prompts and everything like that. So lots of goodies. I love that. And I'll include those um, handles in the caption and show notes as well. Awesome. But oh my God, I'm so grateful that you took the time out to talk to me today. I love this conversation so much and yeah, lots of like, yes, reminders and <laughs> all of the things. But you know, it must be something all the collective needed to hear as well, right? Yeah. So anything that comes up and you're, we're both resonating oh, yeah. with it, I trust. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Other people and, need to hear this too. <laughs> yeah. Intu- trusting intuition and action, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Jess. I really appreciate it. You're so it. welcome.